welcome everybody. I'm so glad that you're here. For those who don't know me, I'm Julie Bogart. I have five grown kids, 19 to 28. We homeschooled for 17 years. We also used a little bit of the public school system in high school. Hey Marissa, first timer, welcome. And I started the company Brave Writer 16 years ago in January. We've been helping homeschool families learn how to write, how to get along for 16 years. And we've had tens of thousands of families come through our doors, take our online classes, and use our program. My background is as a professional writer, and I intersected that skill set with my passion for homeschooling and created a program that is designed for you, homeschooling parents so that you will feel like you have the kind of support that you're looking for. I remember being in, you know, fourth grade Saxon math or some program like that, and just not having anyone to call and not understanding if anyone could help me. I was trying to learn how to be a good home educator, but there was no one on the other end of the phone who understood the dynamic of homeschooling. Do you know what I mean? So everything we do in Brave Writer comes from the perspective of what it means to be a home educator. But just so you know, we've had tons of public school families, private school families also take our classes because what we offer is a little different than what you'll find in a traditional school system. In fact, on December 2nd, Wednesday, I'm doing a Periscope for your kids. It's a writing workshop where we're going to focus on revision skills. So if you have kids who tell you, oh, I hate revision, oh, it's fine the way it is, make sure they tune into Periscope that day. I am going to blow their little socks off with some creative approaches to revision that maybe you haven't even thought about yet. So I think it'll be a really fun day, and I promise you that I will be delivering some kind of product between now and then for you to use to get prepared for this scope, okay? I'm working on it right now, very excited about it. Yay, oh, Lori says her son Noah is excited. Yay, well for all you kids watching right now, hello, Chantel, any age. This is the beauty of Brave Writer. Everything I do is for everyone. Yes, we have high school online classes, but when we're talking about a process like revision or drafting or generating ideas, it's not age specific. Pros and eight-year-olds go through the same issues, same structured ideas every time. What I do now is no different than what I did in high school or when I was eight years old writing a story. This is the beauty of the writing life. Yes, you become more capable the longer that you write, but the processes you engage in, very similar. So every age child is welcome. And I have this idea that some of the parents are also going to find this sort of explosive for them too. It may help some of you stuck writers break through to new freedom. At least that's my hope. So great to have you. So if you don't know my company, it's bravewriter.com. You can just visit that on your own time. We have um, online writing classes registering for winter starting December 7th on Monday. I'll give you a lot more information about that. But if you are interested in boosting your homeschool program in the winter, take a look at our website, check on the online classes and get a sense of what we're doing. You can always email me or call me if you need help figuring out which classes are right for your kids. All right, so let's get started. Today's topic comes from my book, A Gracious Space. This is the fall edition. I'm reading one essay per day all through November and then we'll be done. <laughs> we've been at it since the 1st of November and we've done quite a few essays. We are not going in a sequential order. We are doing them based on recommendations from you. So if you want to tell me which ones to do before we come to the end of our time together, please email me. Julie at bravewriter.com and just put a gracious space in the subject line and say, hey, please do essay four, which someone asked me to do and will do tomorrow. Great, wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thanks for saying that about me reading aloud. I find it quite pleasurable. You know, when I lived in Morocco, my husband and I at the time had no television. The internet was not yet available, you know, it was the 80s. So we didn't have a lot to do. And I used to read books aloud to him 
by the hour. Literally read the entire James Clavell Asia series aloud. I read every page. So by the time I had kids, I mean, hello, it was old hat. Reading aloud is bonding and wonderful and some of my favorite memories. Hey, Brandy, welcome, glad you're here. For those of you who want to buy my book, A Gracious Face for Fall, you can go get it at the store on the Brave Writer site, or you can just go to Amazon and type in my name, Julie Bogart, A Gracious Face, and it'll come right up. Hey, Melissa. Oh, you saw your first scope today. Well, how fun is that? Yeah, we've got like 65 of them now, so if you go over to Catch, you'll find them. That's really cool, Eclectimum. I know, I think it's very lovely for spouses to read to each other. It's a great way to spend time together that's not always glued to a television. All right, so what have we got going today? Well, if you're like me, you already feel behind and the holiday hasn't even come. <laughs> I have not yet shopped for a single ingredient. How many of you are not ready for Thanksgiving? Anyone, anyone? I still have to clear out my kids' bedrooms where I've stored all my stuff that I don't wanna deal with <laughs> before they get home from college. I was thinking about that today. I'm like, uh-oh, Jacob can't even walk to his bed. I've got boxes of stuff in his way. Going to Whole Foods tonight alone? Oh, Vanessa, that sounds like a blast. I love going to Whole Foods. Yeah, I'm, I um, have really enjoyed <laughs> having a whole house for all my stuff, but I've got three kids coming home and I've got to be ready for them. So I've got to shop for food, clean out their bedrooms. Some of you are going out of town. You are so smart. That's what I should be doing. So here's what happens a lot around Thanksgiving holidays. You get together with your family and sometimes friends who don't really know much about homeschooling. They know a lot about you, they love you, they care about your kids, but deep down, they're still a little suspicious about this weird choice you've made for your children. And especially if they have their own kids and they've made a different choice. I remember when I had a sister-in-law with six homeschooled kids and my kids were babies, so I hadn't homeschooled yet. And I remember showing up at their house on Thanksgiving and I did a very well-meaning thing. Now, I love homeschooling, and even then, I knew I was going to homeschool. But I remember saying to one of my nieces, I asked her to read something to me, I guess. I handed her something and asked her to read it. And my sister-in-law looked at me and she says, ah, the family pop quiz. <laughs> I said, what? She goes, it never fails. Family and friends always pop quiz homeschooled kids. And that really stayed with me because it's true. You don't run into it so much when you are around kids who are public schooled. Because if the kids are not doing well in public school, who do we blame? The evil school system, the government, the bad teacher, but never the parent and rarely the child. But in homeschooling, oh my goodness, whole other thing. Parents are to blame, the philosophy of education is to blame, the child is to blame. So suddenly, parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles all want to get in there and sort of test to see if those kids are actually learning anything, right? But what do they use to test your kids? Traditional school expectations and models. The pop quiz, the question about what's your favorite subject, Hello, some homeschooled kids don't even know their learning subjects. We don't talk that way. They say, hey, Johnny, what grade are you in? And Johnny's like, what's a grade? That used to happen with Noah. He'd turn to me and he'd be like, mom, what grade am I in? <laughs> it's like, well, let me see. You're in sixth grade in math, fourth grade in English, you know, seventh grade in science. Like, what is grade level when you have a homeschooled child? Everyone is well-meaning, usually. I mean, there's a few rude people who really aren't. But the vast majority are hoping that this weird project you've taken on is going to work out and bring about the successful education of your children that they love and hold dear. So we wanna start from that perspective. They're well-meaning. And with that, let's go ahead and read Why I Homeschool. There are eight points, and because I love you, I made pretty pictures to go with. I guess we're lucky because all kids are asked those questions in my family regardless of school. And you may be lucky. I was lucky. 
My whole family supported what we did, and it was wonderful to have that kind of support. Even with support, however, family members express curiosity, and they may still ask you questions that annoy you, like, well, what will you do about prom? You know, those non-essentials that everybody thinks are so important. So we're going to talk about that today. All right, let's start then with day 47 from a gracious space fall. Why I homeschool. Ready? Story time. The holiday season is uniquely challenging to homeschoolers. All fall, you've blissfully gone along planning your days, teaching your children, enjoying the closeness of family learning, unaware that anyone outside your four walls would suspect you of inflicting harm or undermining your children's social skills or academic prowess. Enter Thanksgiving or Christmas or any other holiday. The non-homeschooling contingent will assemble and take over for the state on your behalf. While passing the glazed carrots to little Theo, Aunt Tilda might quiz, what's two times six, darling? Not to be outdone, your mother-in-law will probe sixth grader Emily. Do you get out much, sweetheart? Have you any friends? Your father will subtly remind you that you haven't got a degree in education. And with the economy the way it is, wouldn't it be wiser to get a part-time job in your specific field to help support your husband rather than wasting your time all day in the house? Finally, your brother, whose wife works full-time outside the home, wonders how you can stand to be with your kids all day, every day. We don't need certification or testing because our families do a wonderful job of it all by themselves. If you come from a family that supports your homeschooling experience, rejoice and make them extra pumpkin pies. They are the wonderful few. I come from such a family and I'm deeply grateful. Even if your family is supportive, you may find yourself at a Christmas party where other adults pretend curiosity about your choice to homeschool while conveying thinly veiled skepticism about your qualifications. Yes, that happens to me frequently. I have a few tips for sticking up for this renegade lifestyle you radical parents have chosen on behalf of your kids. Number one. You are qualified. Don't justify your choice by touting your credentials or qualifications. Even if you have a teaching background, leave it out of the equation, please. The homeschooling movement benefits from a bold declaration that parents are adequate to teach children to read, handwrite, and calculate times tables. Let skeptics know that you are as much educational coordinator as instructor as your kids get older. Remind them that they are making educational choices on behalf of their children too. I'm gonna read each point, but I'm gonna pause between them to comment, okay? So number one, you are qualified. You're qualified. If you are a fluent native speaker who knows how to read and write, you can teach your kids. Not only that, you can learn what you need to learn when you don't know it. Or you can hire out, use co-ops, triangle in local public schools if they have part-time enrollment. There are many ways to get your kids their education. What people are really asking is, do you know enough for your kids to get the same education they would get if they went to school? And what you wanna reassure people is, being an effective educator and educational coordinator is your career and you are serious about it and devote a lot of energy to it. So once you let them know that, that often reassures them. Let's go on to number two. Number two. Number two is, whoops, I heart being with my kids. I love being with my kiddos, right? Isn't that why you do this? You wouldn't do it if you didn't like your kids. Yeah, heart it up for loving our kids. Very good. So number two, focus on the enjoyment you get from being with your kids. 
More important than discussing the failures of the school system is emphasizing how much you love being with your kids. No one can take that away from you. Most parents are startled to realize that being with your own children 24-7 is a pleasure, not a dreaded task. To argue with you means they are admitting they don't enjoy being with theirs in the same way. So if you start from the premise that your kids are awesome people and you want to hang out with them, sometimes you'll even get back, oh my gosh, I could never do that. It would drive me crazy. But when people say that, they're acknowledging that the choice you've made is a really pretty admirable one. You don't have to rub their noses in it. You might even say back, which I've said at many a soccer game, oh, I bet if you were home with them long enough, you'd get into a routine and really discover that it is super fun to hang out with your kids. Like I like to give some vision about how great it is rather than being defensive or attacking or accommodating, right? All right, let's look at number three. Learning together is fun. Homeschooling is all about family learning. You got that one? Good. Talk about family learning instead of school or education. Many parents imagine assignments, grades, and lectures when they think of homeschool. They can't picture imposing all that discipline and structure while retaining a happy family atmosphere. That's what they think's happening at home. They think you're putting them around a table and supervising them and making sure they finish their paperwork and standing in front of them with a blackboard. But we know that's not what we're doing. Homeschool is different than institutional learning because the family is learning together. Discuss how everyone gets involved at his or her own level when working on a history topic or science experiment, when free writing or listening to a novel read aloud. Tell them about tea times and poetry. Resist the temptation to explain how what you do matches what a school requires. You know, a lot of times what I've said to curious people is that we're on a learning adventure as a family and that all the subjects are covered, but because we're like a one-room schoolhouse, we're all together, we get to explore it on a variety of levels, whether that's kindergarten level or a 10th grader. There's something about the family dynamic that enriches the conversation around the topic. And I'm gonna tell you a fun little story from back when I lived in LA. I was kind of a talk radio junkie, and I remember one morning while I was making breakfast before we started homeschool, the local station guy, the local uh, radio talk show host, was having a homeschool discussion on his drive into LA show. And he asked for people who homeschooled to call in and he was being very, very antagonistic. So I dialed, got in. And he said, I don't understand the difference between homeschool and regular school. Why would you do this when the LA city schools are so great? So I told him, I said, well, when we study the Civil War, the entire family is studying the Civil War. We're reading the same books. We're watching movies together. Our dinner time conversations are about the Civil War. We pull out fiction. When we look at science, we find out about scientific developments during the Civil War. It's like this whole family integrated program. And he said to me, yes, but couldn't you do that with school kids? I mean, they come home from school and you have good dinner time conversations said, well, not really, because they all have different teachers who have different subject areas, whose vision is one I haven't been privy to, but I'm orchestrating all this, so I'm able to guide all of us. And you know what? He paused and he said, now that makes good sense. That's a good reason to homeschool. And I was like, yeah, props for homeschool on LA radio <laughs> 25 years ago. But that's the kind of thing you want to do, champion homeschooling for its strengths and defend the style of education without blaming or shaming the other. You just wanna make sure that you know what you're talking about. We don't have to shame public school. We wanna focus on what's strong about homeschool. Number four, it's my favorite picture. Everyone chooses 
an educational program for their kids. Everyone. Someone said no sound. Can you hear me? Is it that person or is it me? I'm going to go with you can hear me. Uh-oh. Silence? You hear me. Perfect. All right. Number four. Validate their authority in selecting the educational choices they've made for their kids. In other words, your friends have also made choices. They may not see it that way because they did the most commonly chosen thing going to school, but, okay, the person who can't hear me, just maybe check your settings on your phone because it's coming through. I've, I've checked all my systems and it's on. Um, they've made a decision. They just maybe didn't think of it that way, right? Because they're doing what most people do. So let's read about that. This is perhaps the most important thing you can do in these discussions. Talk about educational choice. All of us make choices in how we educate our children. Let your family and friends know that you support their enthusiasm for the school system and that you can see how that's working out for their kids. Find whatever good is occurring in their lives and support it. Then share the unique joys of homeschool. In other words, they chose the school system. I run with a bunch of women who are home who are not home educators. They had kids in public schools. I was the only homeschooler. And it was fascinating listening to their conversations about the benefits and the liabilities of public school. You know how I contributed? I shared the benefits and liabilities of homeschool. Because the truth is, we all have our unique frustrations and we have our unique delights in any educational choice. And what humanizes you and makes you a wonderful friend is when you're not promoting propaganda about homeschool, but are admitting that even in the midst of struggle and challenge, you still would choose this. Just like your friends don't pull their kids out of school necessarily just because they're frustrated with a teacher. Does that make sense? So be human. Celebrate their choices, support them in their struggles, and give them the opportunity to do the same for you. Number five. No defense for the socialization question. Okay, we're going to talk about the one that everybody asks. But what about socialization? Once you've convinced them that the education is happening, isn't this where they go next? Yep. Resist defending your kids' social lives. That one rarely goes anywhere good. We've all been programmed since toddlerhood to believe that socialization matters and that it happens at school. Trying to get adults to understand differently is an exercise in clacking your noggin against a cutting board. So sidestep it like this. My kids have great social lives. You know us. We're into people just like you. Something to the effect that lets them know that you aren't worried one tiny bit about their futures as successful people in the world. And of course, you can always list the myriad ways they hang out with people. We had a co-op. We were a part of a zoo experience. My kids were on sports and dance teams. They participated in the library poetry community. They had all kinds of outlets for social life. And I know your kids do too. So it's okay to point those out. Some people undervalue those because they're so used to school providing all of it. I've also found out that sometimes parents are able to remember their own negative social experiences in school. And so if you say, well, you know, we'll reevaluate when, you know, Johnny hits 16, but Junior high was kind of rough for me, and I kind of want to keep them back from being bashed in junior high. Do you know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you'll get an empathetic, oh, yeah, I remember junior high. So, you know, depending on the personality, you can sometimes remind parents that not everything about school is positive, even in their own memories. Number six. This is really important. School is cool. This is the bash-free zone. Bash-free zone. School is cool. 
Number six. In other words, don't bash school. Just don't do it. Save that for your little homeschool community where you fire each other up and throw out the red meat that they can all jump on. Oh yes, public school is terrible. It's immoral. It's uh, teaching things I don't agree with. All the things you like to talk about, save those for your friends. You know, pretend like you're on talk radio talking to the echo chamber. Save it for that group. When you're around people who are not a part of that group, who are public school people, be generous. You survived public school, many of you, and you turned into perfectly wonderful adults. It is not evil. Not only that, you don't know the future. If you wind up with cancer or divorce or some enormous tragedy in your family, you might need to take advantage of the local public school system. And it is going to be there for you. And it will need to be there for you. And if you've built up this fantasy of it being, you know, evil on wheels, you'll sabotage your ability to take advantage of it as a resource. So school isn't evil. You're making a choice. And because the choice is a bold one, sometimes we have to sort of, you know, make bad the thing we're not choosing to feel strong enough to go forward with our choice. But once you're comfortable with your homeschool choice, you don't have to bash school. You really don't. School is school. School is cool for some people. And yeah, and, and not to mention how the kids will feel. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that I noticed with my friends who have kids in school and even my kids who went to school, yes, and people are married to public school teachers and counselors, is this. If you've been out of the school system for a while, you can build it up into this image that's really not related to reality. You know, most kids are just sitting in desks doing schoolwork, you know? And yes, there's always that group of kids that are doing things that make you nervous, but by and large, the system is just producing people who go on to college and make adult lives. We just want to de-escalate how evil school is. I think that's really important for our own well-being. Yeah, exactly. It's our own insecurities that cause us to defend so offensively. Yeah. And, and honestly, I've learned a lot from school teachers and school blogs. I read educator blogs all the time. I find it really fascinating. I've learned all kinds of stuff about cognitive development and how to stimulate good discussion in a group and how to approach a subject in a multifaceted way. A lot of school teachers are experts at that. They've been trained in it. And you can benefit from that and bring it into your home school. So those are other reasons to not bash school. See it as a resource. Pick and choose accordingly. I'm going to read that section now. <laughs> Don't bash school. Surefire way to set off fireworks over the mashed potatoes. Focus on what you love about homeschool. Share one or two challenges, if appropriate, so that you don't sound like a propaganda machine. And affirm your relatives for the great kids they have. We are all insecure about our choices, so be a voice that lets your family know that you support them in their parenting too. If you aren't impressed with their parenting, the holidays are not the time to bring that up. <laughs> and you know what else? It's never the time to bring that up. <laughs> Keep your nose in your own family. We all have our own challenges and pointing out other people's terrible parenting has never worked. Doesn't work when it's directed at you and it doesn't work when it's directed at them. So just Zip the lip. Don't do it. Number seven. Lucky seven. I can't even read it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take responsibility for your choice. Just smile and eat pie. Exactly. Number seven. Take responsibility for your choice. What do I mean? Take responsibility for the outcome of homeschool. I always like to remind inquiring people that I know I took a risk by keeping my kids home. I tell them that I didn't know how it would all turn out, but I was willing to take a chance and make corrections as I went. I even say that my kids may make different decisions for their own children when they are older. I avoid committing to superior learning, better college admittance scores, and brilliance in my offspring, or anything that puts pressure on my kids to be poster children for homeschooling. They don't need it or deserve the scrutiny. 
I take all the skepti skepticism onto me and I let the failure they may associate with my homeschool choice fall on my head. Protect your kids. Don't tout their astounding brains because Aunt Shirley will immediately conjure a pop quiz. <laughs> Homeschooling is not about producing superior, moral, intellectual human beings. It is a choice you make because you believe that your family will benefit from what homeschooling produces in your lives. And for some of your kids, that will be this rich academic career. And for others, it will be personal exploration into their passions. And not everyone understands that both of those are successful outcomes of homeschool. So don't put pressure on your kids to live up to school measurements to prove homeschool success. Okay, it's not fair to them. Someone asked for number six, it was school is cool, don't bash school. Okay, and then the last one is number eight. Beware the eight ball. Shh, no talking to rude people. Okay, the eight ball. That person who won't let it go and who loves to get your goat. Don't talk to rude people. Turn away insulting comments with a polite, I'd rather not talk about homeschool on my Thanksgiving vacation. This is my time off. Curmudgeons don't deserve the full why I homeschool defense. And you can enforce it. You can say right to them, hey, this is my break. We don't discuss school. We don't discuss work. Have another piece of pie. It always helps to go have something in your hand or get involved in something else. Don't be drawn in. This is what remote controls are for. The bottom line is this. You homeschool because it feels like the best educational choice for your family. That's a good enough reason for everyone. And you can stop right there if you need to. There's always the remote control, pie, and football to distract the persistent. Quote of the day. I want pie too. <laughs> Great list. I particularly like number seven, which was taking responsibility for the outcome of homeschool. One way I've responded to questions is to simply say that each form of education has strengths and weaknesses. I'll give what I see as the strengths and weaknesses of learning at home as we've done it. Many times questions aren't hostile. People are only trying to understand. I've answered lots of questions from friends who are Chinese and are fascinated by the very foreign concept of homeschooling. I also think your point about family learning is a great one. It's very difficult for some people to get away from education as bells and tests and large classrooms filled with children who listen. Becky Parker. Sustaining thought. Homeschooling is a choice just as much as public or private school is. No defense needed. How about that? Yeah, someone says she can't, oh, Vanessa, that you can't imagine homeschooling being illegal. It's illegal all over the world in so many countries. I mean, we are so lucky that we have the freedoms we have. Yes, yeah, someone, uh, someone says you get a better response if you don't get defensive. <laughs> yeah, Suzanne, that was Becky. <laughs> so good. Yeah, so... Who wants to hurl one at me that I didn't cover? Should we, oh, let's do a quick recap because not everybody here was here at the beginning. So if you haven't shared this broadcast yet and you want to with your friends, just swipe to the right on iPhone up on Android and tap the share button. And I'm going to go back through the eight points and then I'll take questions. So if you want to start typing in your questions, you can do that too. Ready? Number one. You are qualified. Stick up for your qualifications to be a home educator. Okay? That's number one. You don't have to have special training. You get to homeschool just like they get to put their kids in school. Everybody is making educational choices. Number two. I heart being with my kids. Spending time together is a great reason to homeschool. Say that you love hanging out with them. No one can take that away from you. That is a powerful defense for homeschool that is very difficult to refute. Number three. 
Learning together is fun. This is a great reason to homeschool together. Someone said that her mother complains there's no Christmas program. Well, guess what? Create one. Get a few families together, invite over the grandparents, and recite some poetry, sing some songs, make apple cider. I used to do this all the time with my family. What do you say to a family? Ah, I lost it. Copy and paste. I need to see these. <laughs> Number four, everyone chooses, not just you. Remind people that education is, um, is a choice in America and we can all choose and they're choosing too. Number five, no defense for the socialization question. It never goes anywhere good. Just simply let them know that it matters to you and your kids have a lot of friends. That usually is enough. If you need to give the list of extracurricular activities, that works too. Number six, whoops. Oh, that you're making things too easy for your kids. They won't be prepared for life. Yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> That's a good one. School is cool. Do not bash other people's school choices. Sometimes school is fine. There you go. Okay, I, I saw that one too. Number lucky seven. Take responsibility for your choice. Do not use your children as poster children for homeschool. Say, you know, if it all fails, it's on me. I will take care of it. I am responsible. I know it's up to me. And then finally, the eight ball. That rude relative who won't shut up, hand them pie and watch the Cowboys play football. <laughs> okay, that's how you handle that one. All right, so for those of you who have parents who are complaining you homeschool and they don't see you enough and they want to go to programs, well, homeschooling is so flexible. I would absolutely just make some of those things happen. You can create your own little variety show. You can have them over. We used to have our kids do all kinds of performances for local relatives. They did a Shakespeare play. We did um, Memorize the Gettysburg Address and everybody recited it. We did poetry tea times. We did all kinds of school parties and involved all the parents or relatives who live nearby. This is so optimal with homeschool. The grandparents can be involved in a way they never get to at school where they're just, you know, sitting inside of an auditorium. Yeah, some homeschool groups have Christmas programs. And, you know, if you've got ballet recitals, piano recitals, you know, church programs, your kids are in those things. Grandparents can go to that. So maybe just remind them that there are unique opportunities for grandparent participation. One way to involve grandparents is to send them the writing your kids do and let them be that enthusiastic audience. It can be difficult to live up to another's nostalgia. Yes, and it's not your responsibility to do that either. That's right. It's not. You get to make choices. Your parents made choices. They want us to travel to visit, 10-hour drive. You know, that one, I don't know. If they were in school, it would be difficult. I think you have more flexibility to make that happen as homeschoolers than you do when you have kids in school. So just think about it. Oh, hey, Christine, welcome. Seeing me live. Let's see, there you go. One year my kids memorized poems and made videos and shared them. Yeah, and we also have Skype and Zoom and FaceTime. I mean, so many ways now to connect. I mean, my poor parents, John and I had our first two kids in a foreign country. I mean, grandparent withdrawals. Can you imagine? We lived in Africa for heaven's sakes. So you can connect. You just might need to set up some kind of fun time for them to interact on a regular basis. We invited our skeptical neighbor to teach kids woodworking. He thinks differently about us now. Oh, you are so clever. I love that. Yeah, somebody's mother is reading to her kids through FaceTime? Absolutely. My favorite homeschool mentor and guru, her granddaughter lives in Switzerland and they have a regular Skyping time. They even play peekaboo. They do art projects together. Okay, let's see. How to deal with in-laws who are defensive even though you don't bring education up at all. Um, yes. Okay, so let me talk about that for a minute. Anytime you make a radical choice, home birth, breastfeeding, homeschooling, organic foods, essential oils, not vaccinating, going on a mission, uh, 
organic gardening. I mean, you name it. You know what these things are. Uh, allergies that parents don't believe are real. You all have things that you've chosen that put other people on the defensive. You know how like, let's say you're not eating sugar for a month. Have you ever noticed how if you just choose not to have dessert, everyone around you feels like they have to defend their right to eat Oreo cookies? It's like, look, I'm just not eating sugar. But you guys can eat sugar, but suddenly everyone gets defensive. Oh, I'm just eating sugar because, right? That's what happens. So that's what's going on with homeschool. And it happens with home birth. And it happens with breastfeeding. And most of you are making all of these radical choices. And then what happens is you're around people who are doing what is customary. And they maybe haven't been as um, intentional. They've made the choice that's expected of them. And suddenly they are confronted with a person who's been really thoughtful and intentional in their choices. And it's like a moment, like, well, maybe, maybe I should have been more intentional. That's all that's going on. So one of the things, yeah, and people question what they don't understand. She's her MIL calls her a hippie. I call you a hippie. <laughs> I always say homeschoolers are the hippies of the 21st century. We may be in denim jumpers. We may be protective, but we are saying, I stick it to the man. And that's really tough for people who are conformists or who, I hate to use conformists, that sounds negative, who are just participating in the community in a routine way. There's nothing wrong with that. So if you have defensive parents, maybe just go with it. Wouldn't it be interesting to go, oh my gosh, I sometimes totally doubt homeschooling too. There are days when I think, uh-oh, the yellow bus is going by. I wish my children were on it. Like maybe merge with it a little bit. Maybe admit that you have your doubts at times, that this unconventional choice occasionally feels nerve wracking. Yet yeah, condescension is really tough. That's the, you know, eight ball though. People who are condescending get pie. <laughs> let's just let's just call it that for this weekend, right? Condescending people get pie, or you hand them the remote control, or you ask them to run to the store because you're running out of beer. Okay, <laughs> like give them a job, hand them you know a towel, and ask them to Windex the mirror after your kid's fingerprints are all over it. You know, put them to work. <laughs> Don't let them condescend to you. Set some boundaries, and it's okay to set boundaries. You're a grown up now. That's what grown ups do. They set boundaries. They say, you know what? I love you so much. Can you go get the pie? Or let's save this. Or I have time off. Yeah, this is your time off. You get to enjoy family. And you get to, okay, so Melody Beatty, who's my favorite. She wrote Codependent No More. Some of you know her from ages and ages ago, the 80s. She says this, and it has been a watchword for my life. You cannot set a boundary and take care of someone's feelings at the same time. I'm gonna repeat that. This is, this is a, a knowledge bomb, okay? You cannot set a boundary and take care of someone's feelings at the same time. So let's think about that for a minute. When you say, I'm not going to talk about this, you're going to get blowback. They're not, you can't also make them feel okay. You are not responsible for what happens after you set that healthy boundary. Your only responsibility is to be friendly. You say, you know what? Thanksgiving, I'm not talking about homeschool. And then they come back sideways. You say, oops, remember, no homeschool. And then they get pouty. Can't believe you're being rude to me. And then you're like, hey, wanna help me with pie? You can like nudge up against them and give them a kiss on the cheek and say, hey, remember, we're buddies. We're just not talking about homeschool. You can tease a little bit with some relatives. You can be silly and sweet. You can hold up a big X like, hey, no homeschool. Maybe in advance, make a little um, button like I have here, you know, a circle and put homeschool in it and a red line through it. And whenever it comes up, just go, bam, here's the boundary. You know, be playful with it, but serious about it, okay? Hold the boundary. And their feelings are theirs. You are not responsible to make sure that they smile and are happy. Your only job is to take good care of your family. Yeah, I'm, hmm, that's interesting. Or, oh, I can see that. Those are really good comments as well. Yeah, you can also be like, if somebody is condescending to you, like, you know, 
Well, I see that Johnny still isn't reading. You know, he would if he had been in school by now. That's really hard because it just guts you. It puts you right in that deep space. And if you can sort of go with it just a little bit, say, yeah, it's, it's been hard for me. I really could use some support. That would be a different way to receive it, you know, sort of like receive, like going with the energy instead of fighting it. Yeah, that's, that's been, I'm sensitive about that. It's hard to have you bring that up to me. I could really use some support. That's a really different reaction than defensiveness. You know, owning up to the feeling they just provoked in you and letting them feel the effect of their effect on you. Yeah, people do think you have everything together. Otherwise, why would you homeschool? <laughs> you look like super moms, and you are. Every time that my stepdad, the grandfather of my kids, came to my house, he'd be like, look at you go. You whip meals together. They're all so smart. They're so adorable. How do you do it all? You know, but I had my secret pains and fears and worries, and sometimes I didn't feel free to share them because I was trying so hard to hold up this image of success. But it's okay to have limits and doubts and to feel nervous and to want support. So ask for it. Let them know that you need their good faith. You know, if you have, I, I had a relative who made a comment to one of my kids that I just wanted to like, ah, mama bear, you know, just tear them limb for limb. And I had to later say, separate from my daughter, you may not talk to my daughter like that. And if I hear that again, you can't come to Thanksgivings. So you can do that too. If someone is being truly hurtful and cruel, this is your space. It is your job as the owner of the home, if you're in your own home, to protect the emotional well-being of your family in that space. That is your right and obligation. So protect your kids from creepy uncles <laughs> or whoever else <laughs> might not be treating them well. And then, you know, always limit the length of time. If you bookend the visit, you know, they have to be out by eight because you're all leaving to give cookies to the homeless shelter or something. Well, then that's a way to get rid of them. <laughs> so it doesn't have to go on for, you know, 18 hours. Sometimes just limiting the time length eliminates a lot of these issues because people don't get comfortable enough to start needling each other, right? So any other, you know, scenarios I didn't address or think of that you want help with? It's a good topic, right? Definitely make sure you and your spouse are on the same team. Maybe prepare a little bit, brainstorm ahead of time who might be tricky. You can tag team it too. You feel prepared for Thursday, fabulous. Yes, ask for support instead of defending. Hey, Chantel, that's perfect. Exactly, right, exactly. What else, anything else? Are we, are we done? All right, well, before we go, I want to tell you a couple things. So we are having a lot of fun over on the Facebook group that is for all of you scopers. Facebook.com slash groups slash Brave Scopes. And if you join in, you will be able to download my free gift, which is a gratitude journal. So if you don't have this yet, do it. We are sharing, oops, that's upside down. We are sharing what I call a surprise of happy all month. Instead of feeling responsibility to figure out what you're grateful for, we just spend each day on the alert for something that makes us happy. And then we're grateful for that. So we foist all of the responsibility out there on the universe and say, surprise me. And then we write it down in our journals, or we doodle a picture, or we write a note. And you can also print these for your kids, and they can fill them out. And maybe, before all those relatives come, you can have a few of these hanging around in the house so that relatives can see writing and gratitude as the characteristic of your family culture. Here's the Facebook group again. It's just brave scopes. You can certainly just put that in the search bar and you'll find it. Yeah, when you make space for it, the happy of fears. This is different than the Brave Writer Facebook group, which I also highly recommend. I don't run that other group. I visit it a lot, though. This is just for Periscope specifically. 
Yeah. And we'll have it up through December. It's just a place to talk about the scopes, uh, talk about your surprise of happy. It's to give you a taste of my coaching and of Stephanie Elms, who's also one of our wonderful coaches in Brave Rider. I run a coaching program, coachjuliebogart.com. We call it the Homeschool Alliance. The Homeschool Alliance exists to give you the support you need to sustain your homeschooling commitment. And what we do in there is we read, I make podcasts, we focused on math this month and all the different ways that we can entice learning differently. We also focused on cooking and we have a self-care spa as well. It's a great program. The families who are in there are, whoa, amazing. The conversations are so deep and so fabulous. It's $179 for the whole year or $24.95 a month. And I'm telling you, well worth it. Great group of people. 179 for the year, which is less than most of our six-week online writing classes. So that's pretty good. Oh, Vanessa, the conversation between you and Noah and Matt the other day was great. Yeah, so my son Noah, who is 28 and lives in town, often joins me for podcasts and audio lectures. And he just helped me do like an awesome audio lecture about binary and math and understanding math that we posted for the Alliance. Also, for that writing workshop that's coming up on December 2nd, there will be a tool that goes with it that will be for sale, but Alliance members get it for free. So that's just something to know. So if you sign up for then you will get it also. Yeah, cool. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, that's so nice. I know we've had more and more people sign up for the Alliance since we started periscoping because I think you start to understand the kind of stuff that I do in my coaching. This isn't just about picking curricula or figuring out a schedule, all of which are valuable and some of which we do. But we're going deeper into like the philosophy of home education and how your family dynamic functions because that's the seat of happy homeschooling. Yeah, it is a very safe and very warm space. And all of the posting by the members is just profound. I feel privileged every time I read. There's so much thoughtfulness. Here's the great thing. I've been in homeschooling groups forever and a day. All I wanted was a deep, safe space for people to take learning risks, to explore all of their truths without judgment, ridicule, or being made the object lesson for the rest of the group. And that's what we do in that space. Chantel, we're good. We're not limiting subscribers. So far, we're doing great. I think we just crested 200. So we've got like 205 or 10 active members. But over the course of last year, we've had like eight or 900. You know, people don't stay for the whole year. They can just come for a couple months. And that's totally fine too. Yeah, you don't have to do, you can come for a month and like, hunker down, read and do everything, download everything and get out. So if you're that kind of person, you know, have at it for a month, it's $24.95. Okay, so I have two more things I wanna share. One is we have a program called The Arrow in Brave Writer. And what it is, is we use living books like Poppy by Abby. And this is the book for third to sixth graders in the month of December. And what I do is I take passages from the book and then I choose them for copy work and dictation and I give you notes about grammar, spelling, punctuation, literary style, plot, all in a very conversational way to use with your kids. They use these passages for copy work and dictation to improve their mechanics and then once a month we look at a literary element together. This coming month, by popular request, we're doing Poppy. Do you guys know Abby, the, uh, the author? He's got a whole huge series of all these cute little woodland creatures and all their adventures. So this is a great one to start with if you're interested. I just wanted to feature it because I was working on the arrow today and I was delighted all over again by this sweet book. So the arrow, you can go to store.bravewriter.com if you're interested in that. And then lastly, we're sort of coming to the end of A Gracious Space for Fall. Um, I'm going to read them through the end of November, but there is a winter version for those of you who want something for the new year, 
And that's also available on the website and in Amazon. I know I'm getting very commercially all of a sudden, but I kind of forget to do it. And <laughs> this is how we fund Brave Riders so I can keep doing these periscopes. My favorite thing. Okay, everyone got that? So, very great to have you here. <laughs> Vanessa's child was in the bathtub. You can imagine he is a prune now. Uh, very nice having you all today. Anybody have a last thought before I close? Are we good? I got a great lighting tip today. Um, this one. Here you go. A gracious space for winter. I'm assuming that's the one you meant. Yeah, there it is. The photos are so incredible on the covers of my book. I'm so grateful for them. Yeah, good. They come from Tammy Wall. She's a great homeschooler. So, deep breath. I send you into the holidays equipped, ready to be strong women and men if you're watching, and protective of your children, enthusiastic about homeschool, and loving and kind towards all the relatives and friends in your life. People first. That's right, Jeanette. Oh, people first. <laughs> That's the next essay. I don't know what number it is, but anyway, it's in here somewhere. Okay. All right. Mwah. Blowing you a kiss. Live honestly. Write bravely. I'm Julie Bogart from Brave Writer and the Homeschool Alliance. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow and every day in November. Have a great night, everybody. Bye.